Welcome to Electron Line. So let's try and understand the phase transfer or the phase response in an RC circuit. Again, it's a very simple circuit. We have a source voltage that can have a frequency, and we have an output voltage across a capacitor and a resistor. So the transfer function is simply the ratio of the magnitude of the output voltage over the input voltage. And notice that the transfer function will look something like this, where it's maximum transfer. In other words, we have the equal output to the input voltage on the magnitude when the frequency is zero, and when the frequency goes to infinity, then the output voltage will diminish to zero, and so you have a zero relationship between the output voltage and the input voltage on the magnitude. And that makes sense. Let's assume for a moment that there is zero frequency. We have a steady state current. The steady state current will fill up the capacitor. Eventually, when you have a, the capacitor is full, there will be no voltage drop across the resistor because there will no longer be any current, and therefore the output voltage will then equal the input voltage, and the phase difference between the two will be zero because the output voltage and the input voltage will be at the same value at the same time. Then we look at the phase response and notice that's indeed what we see. When the frequency is very small, the phase difference between the output voltage and input voltage is equal to zero. And that's what we mean by the phase response. It's defined as being the difference between the output voltage and the input voltage in phase. What's the phase difference between the two? If there's no phase difference between the two, then the phase angle is zero. The phase angle is calculated as being negative, the inverse tangent of the frequency of the input voltage divided by omega sub naught. And again, omega sub naught is defined as 1 over RC, which is equal to 1 over the time constant. It's the inverse of the time constant. For example, if the time constant is 1 tenth of a second, then omega will be 10 radians per second. Now, let's say we increase the frequency. As the frequency increases, as the voltage goes up and then goes back down, and the voltage goes up and it goes back down, if it's very slow, then of course the capacitor will fill up completely with charge, and it will not be that far behind. But in other words, the phase difference between the output voltage and the input voltage will be very small. As the voltage increases, the capacitor will begin to charge up, and it won't be long after the voltage has reached its maximum value that the voltage across the capacitor has reached its maximum value, so the phase difference is small. But as we begin to increase the frequency on the source, then the capacitor will have trouble keeping up. In other words, it will not be able to charge fully very quickly. It will only get a small amount of voltage across it, so that's why the amplitude of the response goes down. But also, it's not going to be able to keep up. So this will go up, and then this will follow, this will go down, this will follow. And the faster this goes on the left side, on the source, the more difficult it will be for the voltage across the capacitor to reach its maximum value, and the difference in the phase increases. And on, essentially, when the frequency goes to infinity, then it goes up so quickly that it cannot follow that quickly, of course. The amplitude will go to zero as well, but the phase difference will go to 90 degrees. The phase across the capacitor will, fo will follow the phase uh, across the input source or the source voltage, and it will get to be 90 degrees when the frequency goes to infinity. Simply, the source will get to the full value so quickly that the voltage across capacitor just began it'll fall back down and then it'll follow it. And you can see that at that point, there'll be about a 90 degree phase difference if the frequency is high enough initially. And of course, that's very visible in this equation as well. But now you realize why that is physically, why there's a phase difference. First of all, the phase difference indicates the phase difference between the output voltage and the source voltage. And the amount of the phase difference definitely depends upon how fast the input voltage changes. If it changes really slowly, there'll be a very small phase difference. If the frequency goes very quick, there'll be a large phase difference, all the way up to 90 degrees when the, phase, when the frequency goes to infinity. And that's how we can understand the concept of the phase difference or the phase response in a response circuit like this, or what we call in a transfer function like that. And that is how it's done.